Hello, I'm Enzo, and today I'll be showing you how to beat Basin. Starting off, I'm prioritizing hooking up this turbine condenser and making more beryllium production. For this early part of the map, I'm very fast paced. I'm trying to do everything as quickly as possible. After you set up more beryllium production, I start auto mining beryllium to increase our production even further. We need this so that we can start making defenses and start making units. I also put an underflow duct to prioritize silicone production, and I continue to auto mine beryllium for a little bit. Once I have enough beryllium, I make a power line going out to the left and I build our radar. This is so we can reveal a bit more of the map and get another turbine condenser spot. We can also then place a turret which further reveals the map for us. This is going to be our first defense line. My first priority is setting up a wall so I can keep out enemy tank units and set up a turret so I can start destroying them. This gives me some more time and allows me to start constructing my own units. Also don't forget to collect the power here as well. After we build a wall and a turret, I prioritize unit production. I make two tank factories. Tanks are the first type of unit that I produce and I prefer these over mechs because they do more damage, have more armor, and have more health. It's also important to make a overflow duct so that the silicone goes into the factories first and then goes into your core. After we've produced a few units, I'm starting to explore. There's kind of three bases here. One to the left, one to the top left, and one to the top. The top is the one we should be going for. Both the top and top left bases have cores in them. We're gonna go for the top base because we can use all the materials there, and it also has tungsten, which is insanely useful. I also learned that you can use your beam to repair stuff. I wish I had known that way earlier. We don't have doors yet, so I'm just gonna make my own. You have to replace the blocks so that units don't go into your base, so that's just something to keep in mind until you get tungsten. Anyways, after that, I'm sending all my units to go and capture the base. You just have to be careful of the turrets to the left. Otherwise, though, you'll be fine. What we need to do is just go up in here, capture the core, defeat their units, and that's about it. Make sure we don't get hit by those turrets. There's nothing true special in here. We just want to capture this core. Now, it's very important that you capture this core only to start. And you'll see my entire plan for that later. Once we've captured the core, I put my units to start defending it. I'm going to build my own core here, and I'm going to need something to defend me. Since we have tungsten, I'm going to start some tungsten production. Use all of the vents around you and get power from them. I put one as a vent condenser instead so I can get some water for my impact drills. After that, I built a turret to start helping out my units in defense, but I kind of forgot tungsten increases the range of your turrets. So if you really wanted, you could place it a bit closer and take out all three of those turrets with no hassle. But it's also slightly a waste of ammo because turrets do less damage to buildings than units. Now that we have tungsten, I'm going to start building doors so I don't forget to make doors for my units. Doors have more health than brilliant walls and automatically allow your units in and out. At this point, I've amassed even more units and I'm going to go rush the left base. Now, this doesn't have a core, which is good to know. It's just a simple manufacturing defense base, but this is insanely important because there are a few vents here which I can use for a lot of power. After that, I sent a few more of my units to attack this turret. Sublimates are really powerful and can wipe out an insane amount of units if you're not careful. So yeah, it's better to let the turrets handle that. So I just crippled its ammo supply. While I was attempting to set up very vital power, I couldn't place this. That's because the enemies do have a tendency to rebuild. So I sent a few units over to prevent that from happening. Power is very important early game. This is because for some reason you just use an insane amount of power and don't have enough. So it's very important to connect up all of your power grids to make sure you have enough. After that, I started collecting the graphite and sand from the walls to make some silicone so I can produce more units. This is very important. Now I'll explain why I'm not attacking the other core in a bit, but for now we need to set up some more industry and more unit production. Now, I could use a vent condenser to make more water for the electrolyzers, but that actually costs you way more power than it's worth. So it's better just to connect all of the vent condensers up to your electrolyzers. Then you can use the water from those and make hydrogen. Hydrogen is insanely important for unit production. You can also use it to boost your plasma bores. I'm starting now to produce tier two tanks. This requires a bunch of resources, most importantly tungsten and hydrogen for the refabricators. It's also an insanely power hungry process, so just watch out for that. However, you should pretty much be fine. Even if you have to disable some of your old power circuits, I usually have enough power to do all of this. 
This step is completely optional, but I did it because of my past trauma with this map. I placed a few turrets here just in case some flying units eventually decided to come in and attack my base and destroy all of my stuff and make me very sad. Okay, time to explain why I wasn't attacking the core. If you attack the core, then the game begins. Like, truly. So, I came in here, and my whole goal was to actually cripple their unit production, not destroy their core yet. If you destroy their core, the nuke will be launched, your main core will be destroyed, and then you'll have to deal with all of the four other cores. So, I had a really close call here. I almost destroyed the core by accident. I just really wanted to cripple all of their production. And I eventually did send my units into the back to make sure they didn't try anything or spawn any more drones to repair stuff. But still, very close call. I don't recommend going that far. I would just send one unit in to destroy the fabricator next time. To save myself some very valuable power, I'm destroying the silicone furnace and the old tank fabricators. We don't need these anymore now that we have tier 2 tanks. And for this area, the only thing I really want to keep is the graphite production, because graphite is one of the hardest materials to obtain currently for me. Everything else, though, I just disconnect. I don't want it taking up my very precious power. Kind of in the middle of the two old bases, I'm collecting the graphite. I'm using hydrogen to boost it so I can get a lot more graphite. And this is very important. This allows me to make even more silicone. Guess what? I'm making more units. This time, I'm making tier 2 mechs. This is because I currently can only build 30 of each type because I have two cores. But you can have 30 of each type, so I can have 60 units in total, plus my old tanks. And why stop there? I decided to make some ship factories that use uh, excess materials that I don't need. And so yeah, I can have 30 of those as well, in case I need them as backup to defend my base if anything goes horribly wrong. If you haven't noticed by now, I've skipped pretty much an hour of just waiting for all my units to finish building. Now we're ready. I go ahead and attack the core. This does something very interesting. A whole nuke. You got six minutes to prepare and that's it. Your first core is gonna get nuked. Not the first core you built, but the one you spawned with. So just let that be known. Everything in the circle will be destroyed. So you have to start preparing. That's why I built all of the units before I destroyed this, so I had plenty of time. I'm also setting up some more power production to kind of cope for my power that's going to get destroyed here. So here, I just scrap everything I do not need for the resources. I want to keep the power grid intact for as long as possible so I can keep making units in case I have to. And to be perfectly fair, it's more worth the resources to just scrap it than have them destroyed for free. This wasn't necessary, but I built a little defense line here just in case anything truly bad happened, if more units spawned earlier than I expected. You might have also seen this water line. This is so I can connect all of these up to my hydrogen production. And there's the nuke. Yep, all my stuff just gone. This also unlocks the rest of the map. Now, at first, I was planning to set up some more industry here and start defending, but I have sent all of my units to start attacking. This got very interesting. Now, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys this part because uh, I was trying to work on building some stuff here, but once they start attacking, it gets pretty epic. Now this part is amazing. I've sped it up because it took forever. But with this many units, you can just destroy their entire base. This is my whole strategy. Apparently, the enemy only starts constructing units after the nuke lands and this whole sector unlocks. I thought I was going to be in for an insane amount of resistance. But it's just some flimsy turrets. It's nothing. I just sent all my units here and just started annihilating their base. This is how you play this map. I know it can be really boring to wait for all of your units to construct, but trust me, this is the best way I've found so far. And this is the first time I've beaten the map, so yeah, I'm glad how well it works. Anyways though, I haven't played this map, or haven't gotten this far at least in it that many times, so I'm just sending all my units everywhere to try and scout out the map. When you have 30 of each units, even though this stuff will stand in your way and will annihilate some of your units, in total you should be fine, I believe. I mean, I was fine here. I kind of just divided and conquered so that one party of my units was going in one place and destroying, the other was going to another to explore and destroy. I mean, not much else to explain about this part. It's just carnage. The only annoying thing was finding the rest of the cores and these sublimates here. These things are really annoying, but thankfully they run out of energy really quickly. And since I don't have them yet, I'm not sure if they overheat or run out of fuel or what they do, but thankfully they're dead quickly.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I always appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helped at least some of you beat this map, because this was absolute pain for me. It took me around maybe six hours in total, including the stream I made. So yeah, I just wanted to share this. Hope it helps someone beat this annoying map. I'll make more videos about maps in the future if I need to, if I get stuck on them. Otherwise, I do stream my industry quite a bit. It's a very fun game. This is going to be Enzo from Lickin' the Gaming, signing out.